Hey guys, welcome to Hippie Use History. We're gonna do it up for you right now. We're gonna do a little bit of whack. <coughs> Excuse me. That would be the House on Un-Americans Activities Committee, which was a standing committee in the House of Representation from 1945 to 1975. But before we get started, we're going to talk a little bit about the precursors to what will become HUAC, which actually originate in the Senate in 1918 and 1919, called the Overman Committee, named after its Senate Committee Chairman uh, Lee Slater Overman, who was a senator from North Carolina, was first uh, charged with investigating a German influence in the bootlegging arena in the United States. But as the Russian Revolution occurred in 1917-1918, it turned its focus on Bolshevik influence in the United States, really kind of sparking the first Red Scare, um, kind of promoting this fear that these uh, communists were coming from Eastern Europe and the now Soviet Union to infiltrate the United States and overthrow its government. So that's really kind of the first guy that we have, the Overman Committee, and that's replaced in the 19. 30s um, by another institution in the House of Representatives called the Fish Committee. And these are not standing committees. These are kind of special investigative committees. But Hamilton Fish, who's a Republican House member from the great state of New York, in the 1930s used that to have public and private hearings to investigate suspected uh, public employees and organizations and individuals of being communists. And he particularly didn't like the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, um, and he spent a long time going after them, as well as pressure the Justice Department to really clamp down on um, enforcement of suspected communists and really manipulating immigration law to keep suspected communists out. So the second committee we get from 1934 to 1937 is the McCormick-Dickstein Committee, named after House Member John McCormick from Massachusetts and Samuel Dickstein from New York, both Democrats. And their original purpose was to have an Un-American Activities Committee to investigate Nazi propaganda and other certain propaganda, but they certainly had a lot of latitude to also go after suspected communists. They're most famous for kind of exposing or investigating what was the business plot, which was um, supposedly uncovered by Major General um, Smetley Butler, who was one of the Bonus Army leaders that there was these Wall Street tycoons that were planning a fascist overtake of the United States. And then in 1938 to 1944, we have another committee, and now it's a kind of special investigative committee that's renamed the House on Un-American Activities Committee. This is led by a man by the name of Martin Dyes Jr., who's a uh, Democratic House member from the great state of Texas. And they have kind of the same purpose, to investigate plots, um, subversives, communists, anybody that's seeking to overthrow the constitutional government of the United States in their view. And they're going to go after organizations like the Federal Theater Project, part of the WPA, saying that this New Deal program was uh, being um, infiltrated by communists who were using their influence to put it into plays and to uh, try to propagate against the United States of America. He goes after the American Youth Congress, as well as private citizens, public employees, and other organizations. They also issued something called the Yellow Report, which was very critical of the War Relocation Department, saying that they had too soft of a stance on the Japanese Americans that were being interned on the West Coast, that they weren't being punishing enough, that this was a real problem, and that we were um, opening ourselves to vulnerability from Japanese spies and such. Now, in 1945, this committee is going to be turned in the House of Representatives to a standing committee. So now we have it, the House on Un-American Activities Committee. The first committee chairman of this new standing committee is a Democrat by the name of Edward Hart. Now, Edward Hart is going to use this committee in the 1940s to really go after some big fish. Um, one would be Hollywood. There was a Hollywood investigation um, that ended up blacklisting 10 producers and directors that worked in Hollywood. Over 300 actors and writers and screenplay artists were kind of thrown out of Hollywood for, for some of them forever. Orson Welles, Paul Robeson, Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin, you dirty little communist bastard. So that was one of their biggest investigations and it really kind of played a big role in putting a spotlight on them. Not soon after, they're going to score a win. They're going to be investigating suspected communists in the government and one of them, Alger Hiss, is going to be convicted on perjury. Um, 
Now he claimed that he never was a spy, but KGB records show that he probably was a spy. So Huak has success in convincing the public by convicting Alger Hiss of perjury that this is a real problem, that they are a needed committee to investigate and root out communists that are buried in the United States government. Their functions also include really pushing propaganda out of Hollywood. We didn't mention this before, but there were films. I Married a Communist, Red Menace, Red Planet Mars. These were all produced by Hollywood after those Hollywood investigations showing the influence of this uh, now standing committee on work and art that was coming out of Hollywood. But really 1947 and 1948 are gonna be their heyday because they're gonna have a problem and it's really not a problem that exists within their chamber, but the other chamber out there across the hall, the US Senate. And that's where we have Joseph McCarthy doing his thing. You've probably heard of McCarthyism. There's another video for that. But McCarthy is really going to kind of implode in the 1950s after he starts going after members of the U.S. Army as being communists. And that's really going to be kind of a weight and an anchor on HUAC as they start to lose credibility. Um, in 1960, they give another big spurt by having investigations in San Francisco City Hall. There's a whole bunch of riots outside. Berkeley and Stanford students who were protesting outside, who were attacked by the police, and this ended up in the public eye big time with the ACLU um, actually putting out films to show what was going on and how ridiculous these HUAC hearings were. Now, their real, real downfall, because they don't die until 1975, is going to occur in the late 1960s, 67, 68, where they start going after the Students for Democratic Society, the Yippies, specifically Abby Hoffman. Now it's one thing when you're going after Orson Welles. He's got a lot to lose. He wears a nice suit, he combs his hair to the side. He doesn't want to be blacklisted. But it's another thing when you're going after Abby Hoffman, who would show up dressed as a revolutionary soldier and hand out copies of the Declaration of Independence, who would do Nazi salutes when people were asking him questions, who dressed as Santa Claus. So he's really using satire and kind of the protest movement to shine a light on the ridiculousness of um, what these hearings are all about. So after Abby Hoffman, that's pretty much it for HUAC. They actually renamed the committee in 1969, the Internal Security Committee. Maybe they thought they could put some lipstick on a pig or something like that. But by 1975, it's really not gonna work. They're gonna abolish that committee. And actually the investigative arm of that committee is gonna be kind of wrapped up into the Judiciary Committee where all the files were moved. So that's HUAC. <coughs> <laughs> the House on Un-American Activities Committee. We hope that you know a little bit more about it now, and we certainly hope that you always remember that where your attention goes, your energy flows, and we'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons.